Well, welcome everybody to this first online Christmas Eve service for both the Unitarian, Unitarian Church of Lincoln and the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of the Brazos Valley. We're going to begin with music. So we're going to begin with O Come All Ye Faithful. Once I stop sharing my own computer sound, there we go. children come, and so they have been coming, always the same way they come, created by our seed, our souls, our love. No angels herald their beginning, no prophets predict their future courses, no wise men see a star to show where to find the babe that will save humankind. And yet, each night a child is born is a holy night. Parents sitting beside their children's cribs feel glory in the sight of new life beginning. They ask, where and how will this new life end? Or will it ever end? Each night a child is born is a holy night. A time for singing, a time for wondering, a time for worshiping. Happy holidays, everyone, and welcome to the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. A special welcome tonight to our friends from the UU Church of the Brazos Valley in Texas, whose minister, the Reverend Christian Schmidt, is a friend and wanted to collaborate 
for a very special Christmas Eve service this year. The virtual nature of worship in this time does have a few benefits, and this is one. Unitarian Universalists from great distances from each other can join in worship as one. Thank you, and it's so good to be here with all of you. Whoever you are, we welcome you in the fullness of who you are. So whether, like me, you are here for the first time, or if you are here for the hundred and first time, whether you come here every Sunday or just once or twice a year, we are so glad you've chosen to spend part of your Christmas Eve together with us. A few announcements as we begin our time together. We are on Zoom, and so for this evening, we've set the, the meeting to keep folks who don't have a speaking role this evening muted. That's to cut down on feedback in the call. You can also, as a reminder, change from gallery to speaker view in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Speaker view highlights whoever is talking at any given time, and gallery view lets you see the gathered congregation. And lastly, um, if you have not already gotten a candle nearby, have a candle nearby. When we come to the close of our service, there'll be a time to hold those up and sing together. But for now, we'll enter into worship with music from the Unitarian Church of Lincoln's music director, Dr. Bob Fusen. Oh. 
We light our flaming chalice, symbol of our free faith, with the words of the Reverend Jude Geiger. We gather this hour to celebrate the most extraordinary story birthed in the most ordinary of times, where we find the promise of life within the face of a baby, where our heroes, a mother, a son, and an adoptive father are travelers, homeless and resting for but a night. We can imagine all too well a time where the powerful fear, a message of compassion, of peace, of simplicity, when it is wrapped in dirty swaddling clothes, sleeping in a food trough among the animals and the mess of poverty. A child born of yet unwed mother, a father whose ties are solely love and a lifestyle that can only be called migrant. From the midst of vulnerability, we learn a new way, a love that moves our hearts, a vision of peace in an age of violence and hope where one would never expect to find it, begins in the quiet solitude of family, with the meek of the earth, with the people that must find another path, knowing the principalities and the powers can never satisfy the least among us. May the Christmas story birth in all of us a sense of possibility, a renewal of faith in the breadth of the human spirit, despite all the failings of our world, that with every child that's born, this wonder is made known. We are given a gift that is our own. Our story tonight is called Red and Lulu by Matt Tavare. In the front yard of a little house, on the branches of a mighty evergreen tree, there lived a happy pair of cardinals. Red and Lulu were happy in their tree. Their nests were always safe in its branches. Its shade kept them cool on hot summer days, and its evergreen needles kept them cozy when autumn winds howled. It was the perfect place to live all year long. But their favorite time of year by far was winter. The family would decorate the tree with lights and sometimes people would gather near and sing. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, thy leaves are so unchanging. Red and Lulu loved listening to the people sing about their tree. And sometimes they even sang along. One chilly morning, just as the cold months were starting again, Red went out to find some breakfast. Lulu stayed behind, tucked in the branches of their tree. When Red returned, he could not believe what he saw. Their tree had moved. It was on its side, strapped to the back of a big truck, and Red could hear the sweet sound of Lulu's song coming from inside the tree. And then the truck drove away. Red chirped frantically, telling Lulu to stay right where she was, telling her that he would be right there. Red flew as hard as he could, for as long as he could, but the truck was just too fast. Before long, Red lost sight of the tree. Still, he kept flying, trying to catch up. Soon he found himself in a strange place unlike any place he had ever seen. For days, Red searched everywhere. He was tired and hungry, and he wondered if he would ever see Lulu again. The snow reminded him of Lulu. He missed her so much. 
you could almost hear the song that they loved. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, thy leaves are so unchanging. Wait, he could hear the song they loved. Red flew toward the sound. The voices grew louder and louder, and then he turned the corner. Red chirped with glee and soared over the singing crowd. He flew right for their favorite branch. Lulu! Red and Lulu were happy in their tree and watched with pride as hundreds of thousands of people marveled at its beauty. But then one day, workers came and took their tree away again. This time, Red and Lulu stayed. They found a new place to make a home in a park surrounded by trees and grass and lots of friends. And now every year, when the air turns cold, Red and Lulu take a special trip. And when the crowd comes to sing, they sit together snuggled close on a snowy branch and listen. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, thy leaves are so unchanging. And sometimes they even sing along. And that is the end of our story. And now a reading from Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. The first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. It's a tradition at both of the congregations joining in worship tonight to take up a collection on New Year's Eve for the minister's discretionary fund. 
In most Unitarian Universalist congregations, this is a fund that allows us to help in unplanned ways in our community. In the last year in Lincoln, we've helped people travel to funerals, paid gas bills, bought groceries, and helped with the occasional rent check. And we're not able to help with every need we hear about. That's not the role that we have, but this allows us to do a lot. We've been out of our office, out of our church building since March. But in the last few months, someone, I'm actually not sure who, on UCL staff started putting thank you cards that we receive on the counter in our office. And when I go into church every few weeks, there are always one or two more in the stack that's been growing since the early fall. I've left a couple there myself. And many, many of them are from folks who aren't members of this congregation, but are members of our community whose lives have been touched through your generosity. So on their behalf, thank you. To give to the Unitarian Church of Lincoln and the discretionary fund, you can text UC Lincoln and the amount you wish to give to 73256. So I'll put that in the chat as well, but that's text UC Lincoln and the amount to 73256. And to give to the Minister's Discretionary Fund for the UU Church of the Brazos Valley, which also goes to support uh, needy people and needy causes in our community, you can go to brazos-uu.org. Um, and the link there is donate here. But you can also just go to the front page of our website and find it. Um, feel free to add a note specifying that it's for this fund, but we'll treat all donations today as being for that fund. Thank you for your generosity. Um, our community appreciates. It. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, as heaven and nature sing, as heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let tender songs implore of fields and floods, of fields and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. Will you join me in a moment of prayer or reflection? We'll begin with words from Jan Richardson. Perhaps it does not begin. Perhaps it is always. Perhaps it takes a lifetime to open our eyes, to learn to see what has forever shimmered in front of us, the luminous line of the map in the dark, the vigil flame in the house of the heart. The love so searing we cannot keep from singing, from crying out in testimony and praise. Perhaps this day will be the mountain over which the dawn breaks. 
Perhaps we will turn our face toward it, toward what has been always. Perhaps our eyes will finally open in ancient recognition, willingly dazzled, illuminated at last. Perhaps this day, the light begins in us. God of many names. God of miracles when the clouds open up and God of the smallest mundane parts of life. We join together tonight telling an old story, a story of hope in unexpected places, of new life in the depths of winter. We tell it knowing that we also wish to find hope in unexpected places, new life in the bitter cold of a Nebraska winter or the, I imagine, somewhat less bitter winter of the Brazos Valley. We also pray tonight knowing that there is grief in the midst of this season. That there are those among us and those we love whose hearts are heavy tonight. Bring them comfort, bring them peace. We pray for those in our communities, wondering where they will sleep tonight, where they will find compassion. We pray for our world, for all those in it who have lost people they love this year, for all those celebrating, for all of those wondering what comes next. We pray for all of these and more because we know that they are us, that our lives are woven together in ways seen and unseen. Our prayer is simple tonight. In a weary world, bring healing, bring peace. Amen. As I wrote this message today, I was thinking about how to talk about hope in a difficult world. And I was also thinking that 2020 has been quite a decade. I know that I did not have as much gray hair a year ago. And uh, as I was writing this, I was thinking that Christmas Eve 2019 seems like it was a very, very long time ago. Later in the service, we'll hear one of my very favorite songs, Oh Holy Night. Um, you may not know, but it's actually originally a French poem, which was set to music, and a translation to English was done by the Unitarian minister, John Sullivan Dwight. He was an ardent abolitionist and also America's first major music critic, a real Renaissance man. Um, the song is especially well known in some circles for its third verse, which is ardently abolitionist and was very controversial in its time and is still controversial in some circles, I suppose. I've always loved this song. It's particularly stirring. It's got such great lines and such a, such a beautiful words and, and, and set to such a lovely piece of music. And there's one line on it this year that's especially on my mind. It's a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. And so tonight we're telling the Christmas story. It's the beginning of the gospel, the good news, and it's a story of hope. And yes, hope in the midst of a weary and troubled world, perhaps not so different from the world we know today. Now, as I was, as I was preparing, I noted that we get a very small part of the story here. Of course, Jesus's life is much more expansive than this, but even in Luke, the passage we heard from today is just a small bit. Luke is actually fairly expansive in telling this story. The first chapter of Luke is all a preface to the section we heard. Um, and it tells a lot about the family of John the Baptist, who will become, of course, an important part of Jesus' story later. In Luke 2, we get the birth narrative, plus a little more. We're told a bit about the political and governance realities of a backwater province of the Roman Empire some 2,000 years ago. Seems poignant this year that they were talking about a census. We've heard a lot about that this year. We also get quite a short description of a birth. 
I think anyone who's been involved in a birth has a lot more to say about it than Luke does. But we do hear a lot about all the parades of people who apparently came by to say hi afterwards, the shepherds and animals and angels. And then in the section after we heard tonight, we get a story about how the baby Jesus was blessed in Jerusalem. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And I note that the glimpse we see is just that it's a glimpse of the story in Christmas time, not the whole thing. Jesus' story didn't start on this night, and his story goes on in many ways even until today. Now, this year, I'm sure you have your own story to tell, and like the Christmas story, it probably has many twists and turns and details and prefaces, and it will extend out beyond tonight. Perhaps the story is one of working in a medical facility treating those with the coronavirus. Or perhaps it's one of staying at home and staying safe. It may have losses. The people we have loved who are now gone, or the loss of a job, or simply the loss of something that had been long planned and didn't happen, and might not happen soon or ever. Your story might also include some really wonderful things, the birth of a baby, or reconnecting via the magic of technology with friends and family, or getting some glorious time alone at home, or learning a new skill, perhaps. All our stories mix joy and sorrow. And I note that even in the year 2020 has been, there are plenty of signs of hope. Maybe your hope this year is in our gathering right here across time and distance, coming together in love and rejoicing. Or perhaps the hope is in the vaccine doses going out all around our country and world right now, beginning to immunize frontline workers and those most at risk. And in coming months more and more until perhaps we will have taken a huge step forward in containing and defeating this virus. Or perhaps the hope, slim as it is, is in the near gridlocked and glacial paced government, who I do believe might actually provide some help for people in need soon. Or maybe your hope comes from so many other places, from looking forward to family traditions, to a good meal spent with people you love, whether they're in the room with you or joining you on Zoom. So may, may you find hope, or may hope find you, in this Christmas season and in the new year to come. It's so good to see so many faces together, Unitarian Universalists connecting across great distances, celebrating this holy night together. May you have the merriest of Christmases and the happiest of New Year's in 2021. May it be so.
if you have not yet, find the candle that you have somewhere nearby and light it while we read these words of Victoria Safford. Now is the moment of magic when the whole round earth turns again to the sun. And here's a blessing. The days will be longer and brighter now, even before the winter settles in to chill us. Now is the moment of magic. When people beaten down and broken with nothing left but misery and candles and their own clear voices kindle tiny lights and whisper secret music. And here's a blessing. The universe is suddenly illuminated by the lights of the menorah, suddenly ablaze with the lights of the canara, and the whole world is glad and loud with winter singing. Now is the moment of magic when an eastern star beckons the ignorant toward an unknown goal. And here's a blessing. They find nothing in the end but an ordinary baby, born at midnight, born in poverty and the babies cry like bells ringing, makes people wonder as they wander through their lives, what human love might really look like, sound like, feel like. Now is the moment of magic and here's a blessing. We already possess all the gifts we need. We've already received our presence, ears to hear music, eyes to behold lights, hands to build true peace on earth and to hold each other tight in love. So if you haven't already, in Zoom, switch to gallery view. Turn your screens to gallery view. See the gathered faces all around from across the country, each beautiful, each a miracle. We'll stay in gallery view as we sing our closing hymn, Silent Night. Post the lyrics in the chat if you want to sing
Our benediction comes from the Reverend Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled. When the star in the sky is gone. When the kings and princes are home. When the shepherds are back with their flock. The work of Christmas begins. To find the lost. To heal the broken. To feed the hungry. To release the prisoner. To rebuild the nations. To bring peace among the siblings. To make music in the heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your presence all. That concludes our service.